let's consider a couple of um, different types of energy conservation problems. So first, I'd like to consider a jump. Okay, so um, when a person is preparing to jump, they kind of squat down. So we're going to have the person kind of like this, okay, getting ready to jump. And then um, once they actually jump, they're going to look kind of like this. Um, and so let's consider what's going on in terms of the energy in this case. Okay, so in the starting position, the kinetic energy equals zero. The person is not moving, so they have no kinetic energy. Um, the gravitational potential energy, we can kind of choose to have that be whatever value we want by choosing y equals zero to be um, in an appropriate place. So let's choose that to be at their starting position. So the gravitational potential energy is zero in this case as well. Well, later, um, their kinetic energy is greater than zero because they're moving. They move upwards and they're no longer at rest. And also, their gravitational potential energy is bigger than zero because they've moved upwards. Okay, so where did that energy come from? Okay, so to get rid of the you know, obvious choices, the work done by the ground is equal to zero because, um, for a couple reasons, one is the ground is not moving. Um, so that's the most important part. Um, but you could also make the case that like the ground isn't changing in any way. Um, nothing is, there's no way that the ground is transferring energy to the person. Um, the ground is just simply not doing anything. So where did the energy come from? What is going on here? Well, if you think about it, you know where the energy for a jump comes from. It comes from the food that you eat. Okay. So um, we have ability to you know jump multiple times, you know, maybe 10, 20, 100 times, but eventually you get tired and you can't jump anymore. Um, that happens because you've run out of whatever chemicals in your muscles, you know, glycogen and sugars and stuff, um, eventually gets used up and then you can't jump for a while. So in order for this to make sense, we have to introduce chemical energy into our analysis. So what happens is um, when you start, you have some um, large chemical energy, and then the chemical energy decreases. Okay, so it doesn't actually go to zero, but uh, just to indicate what happens here, um, your chemical energy in your body decreases as you do the jump, and so we can still do an overall conservation of energy. But we can't really understand the situation without including that type. Okay, let's consider another example. Okay, let's consider a block that slides to rest. Okay, so first we have this block, which is on a surface, and it's moving with some speed. And then later, the block comes to a stop. All right, well, we have kinetic energy here, which is some positive number. Um, the gravitational potential energy is just zero. We can set it to be zero at this height, and that's not going to change. But the kinetic energy does. The kinetic energy is zero at the end, and the gravitational potential energy is still the same. All right, so in this case, where did the energy go? Okay, so um, in order to make sense of this, um, we didn't create any gravitational energy, we didn't create any spring energy, um, and the kinetic energy went away. Well, again, kind of know where the energy went, it became thermal energy. So what we need to consider is that the um, thermal energy starts out small, um, and then later it is big. Um, so uh, whatever energy starts out as kinetic energy later turns into thermal energy. It doesn't go away, it just changes forms in this way. But again, we can't understand the situation unless we include this type of energy. Um, okay, so. What is the takeaway from this? Um, when we're trying to do a conservation of energy problem, um, we've just looked at a couple of very ordinary types of cases that require us to invent new kinds of energy. So essentially what we want to do is just think of the total energy now as being made up of all of these different types, whatever ones are relevant in a given problem. So we're going to have kinetic energy, maybe gravitational potential energy, maybe spring potential energy, but those aren't the only kinds. We can have chemical potential energy, um, you know, maybe from a battery um, or from food. We can have thermal energy. Um, you could have nuclear energy, depending on what situation you were thinking of. Um, there's electricity, um, and the list goes on and on. There are a lot of different kinds of energy, and in any given problem, we're just considering whatever types are relevant in that case. All right, so what we want to do then is we think of this as the external work done on a system changes the total energy by that amount. Okay, so the change in total energy is equal to the work that's done. Okay, so this expression is called the law of conservation of energy. Okay, and it's a little more general than conservation of mechanical energy, because with mechanical energy, we just had kinetic energy and potential energy. Now we're including all these other types of energy that, that we can think of in different situations.